Have you ever opened up Blender, spent three hours turning this goddamn cube into a player character, just for it to turn out into this unholy creation? Well, then you're in luck. Today, you're gonna get expert help from a pro game developer who so far has released one game and made four bucks from it. Yeah, that's right. Hi. I'm Jens, and I'm gonna show you the methods I use for creating my 3D models in Blender. Hold on tight, because this is going to be a bumpy ride. So how does one make a 3D model from start to finish? Huh? Well, it usually involves jumping over five major hurdles. In Blender, we always start with hurdle number one. It's the easiest to get past, but it is very essential. Deleting the default cube. This step is very important, so just throw it out like it's that disgusting corner piece of a loaf of a bread that no one wants. <coughs> and move on to step two, modeling. This is the process where you turn this new cube into something that resembles an actual object. This to this. Step three, UV unwrapping. So, uh, you know, UV unwrapping is like the most boring thing you can come across. Boring. Nonetheless, it is very important if you don't want your model to have this grey old color forever. It's the process by which you cut your object into pieces so that its surface can be represented on a 2D plane. When it is done, we move on to step number four, texturing. It's uh, basically the step of adding colors and textures to your model using 2D images. Who would have thought? Huh? Finally, step number six, exporting. Meaning you're basically done. It's done. This is not really a step at all, if you think about it. Or is it? Hmm. Anyways, let's get on with showing you how I actually do all of this. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to create this scene that I might use for a future game I'm making. Okay, so I won't show you step by step how to make every single model here, but instead I'll be showing you some useful tools and shortcuts that you can use to create any set of models and uh, do it quickly as well. So open up Blender and do step number one. Well, before starting, I'm actually going to show all the noobs out there the basics of Blender. Just skip this part if you already know it. So look around your viewport by holding the mouse wheel down. Scroll in and out to zoom. Uh, this here is the default blender scene that we see. It has a camera light and the default cube. We hate it, so delete it all. You can do this by selecting it by either pressing B and drag a selection square with the left mouse button or press C and select everything. You can also select individual objects by pressing right click on them. Are you sure about that? Uh, so I'm a old school Blender user. You probably need to press left click actually in this case. To delete the selected objects, just press X. Create a new cube or any other object by pressing Shift A and select whatever you want. Important to note that right now we're in object mode. Here we only handle objects. The actual modeling is done in the edit mode. The basics of working with models is selecting vertices, edges or faces and then you transform them by grabbing, rotating or scaling them. Also the most useful shortcuts that I use is E to extrude, I to inset, Control R to make a loop cut and D to duplicate. And then there's a uh, hundred more things that you might need to learn, but uh, you'll get there eventually, probably. Uh, anyways, on with the video. So how do we make a house then? First of all, we need to decide on a type of style for our game. As a wise man once said, it is wise to make low poly stylized stuff if you're working alone or in a small team. And why, why is this? Well, because uh, fast. Low poly just means that the number of triangles in a model is kept low. As long as you keep this number consistent between uh, models, the overall game will look pretty good actually. So when it comes to making a house, it is usually a good idea to make something that you can reuse in the same game multiple times over. This is where making modular pieces come in handy. Essentially, if you want to make a town in a game, Making 20 different looking house models would take forever. Instead, you just make the parts that make a house. Walls, floors, roofs, 
And once you have all of these pieces, you can easily and quickly assemble any number of different houses of different sizes and looks. Damn, that's some fast building. Okay, but how uh, how do how do you go about making modular pieces then? Uh, it's a pretty good question. We mainly need to uh, think about two things. Firstly, the edges of each piece must align with the grid so that when you put a new piece next to it, they will snap together perfectly. Nice. To do this, you need to use snapping when modeling. The second most important thing here is that the origin of the object must sit aligned at the grid as well. I usually put the origin at the foot of the object. So to make a modular low poly wall, simply create a cube, move the model so the origin is aligned at the bottom, and scale it in the Y axis and... First piece done. Yeah. I also added a slight edge to the bottom for some detail, but you can do whatever fits your project. Most importantly here, name your piece so you know what is what. Then you make a duplicate and make some corner pieces by chopping the wall in half, duplicate it and rotate it into place. Then move the vertices of one of the walls into position and merge with the other vertices one by one. Then you can make a window by using some loop cuts. Chop, chop. Punch a hole in this bad boy and fill in the edges by bridging them. Then you can just add a window frame by duplicating this inner loop here. Extrude the loop, then scale it by the X and Z axis. Then scale the entire frame by the Y axis, like this. Just add the glass part by duplicating one of the edge loops and fill it in and move it into place. Boom, windows. No, not that time. <laughs> you can do the same thing that you did with the window to create a door piece. Just remember to leave the hole open and uh, model the door separately if you want it to open in game. Now is probably a good idea to export your objects though. Just to see that uh, there's nothing wonky going on with the models and uh, make sure that they all align in game. Like uh, don't do the mistake I did where everything looked uh, effing perfect in Blender when I modeled this huge ass mansion. Then when I put it in Unreal it looked like this garbage. <laughs> Simply export your models by moving the origins to the center of the scene and export them as FPX files. Now what do these settings do? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Just click click these two options and uh, you're good. Now in your engine of choice, I use Unreal Engine. Just import and build your house and make sure everything snaps together. Most importantly, make sure that it doesn't look weird. If you see any of the insides of your models, that means the normals are flipped the wrong way. To solve this, just uh, go back into Blender, select everything, and uh, calculate the outside. Now you might be wondering, why am I not sub to this douchebag yet? No worries, just go ahead and click that stinky looking shabbity sub button down there. <laughs> Please. As you can see here, we do actually have a slight issue. So this is what happens when faces perfectly overlap each other meaning they compete about which one will be rendered first. But how do we fix this, eh? Well, there are two very simple solutions to this, actually. Either you just slap something on top of it. Slap them then! Look, wow, no flicker, it's gone, didn't ever exist. The second option is to adjust the height of one of the pieces slightly. In my case, I have separated inner walls from outer walls. So what I did uh, was just lowering the inner walls a slight bit. Easy peasy. Now keep in mind that it might be a good idea to have different size modular pieces or you will be very limited in your level design. In my case, I made three separate sized floors. These are essentially just boxes with incrementally bigger sizes. But now we have one problem. This house and its surroundings is looking pretty empty. Need to fill it up with stuff. Plants, tables, bed, toilet, poop. But how do we make these assets then? Reference. Yeah, that's right. No one actually remembers exactly what an elephant looks like. Just uh, look at games similar to yours and use those as references. It doesn't need to be realistic unless your game has realistic graphics, in which case it's going to take you a long time to make a game. So uh, don't do that if you make it alone or in a small team. Like for the kitchen here, we need some cabinetry. Look here, it's just a box with an edge and three more boxes and some handles. Just use the tools I showed earlier. Handles are just donuts cut in half. 
A fridge, on the other hand, is essentially also just a box, but uh, with a slight curve. A little trick here is to use the subdivision modifier, add some edge loops, and that way you very quickly get an old school fridge. Just uh, inset holes by the door and add a box to make the handles. Boom, fridge. Cool. You know, this uh, fridge code. <laughs> Here's another very useful modifier that I used when uh, making this oven, for example. It's the array modifier. Basically, it just adds copies of the object next to it. I did this for the heat regulators here, which, uh, if you want to know how to make those, it's just a cylinder with a box through them. Easy. However, probably the modifier I use the most is the mirror modifier. As you might know, many objects are symmetrical which means that you only need to model one side at a time. Just make sure that the origin is in the middle of the object, then delete half of the model and add the modifier. Wow, look, you just saved half of your time. Okay, we have some stuff for the house, but we need some greenery. You know, trees can be made very easily if you do low poly trees. Easiest way to make a stylized tree would just be to create a UV sphere, scale it in the Z direction, and use proportional editing to deform it slightly. Proportional? What is that? Well, it's just a way of editing where you affect more than what you have selected. As you can see, everything in this ring here will also be affected. So just move it around until it fits what you want. Okay, so if you're into this whole low poly look, you can just leave the tree like this. I personally don't like it, so I smooth. I do this with all curved surfaces. For example, if you have a cylinder like a wheel, just select the ring and smooth the faces. This way the flat part stays flat, but the curved part comes smooth. Okay, so um, making a tree like this one is also super simple actually. All you need to do is create an icosphere and then select the bottom half and delete. Adjust position of the tip slightly so it doesn't look perfect and adjust shape with the proportional editing again. It is very important that you are aware that only one side of the faces are actually rendered in your game engine. The other side will be transparent. So if you're making a game where you'll see the tree from below, you will need to do something about it. In Unreal Engine, there's a simple option in Material Settings to render both sides, so that's easy for you. But if you're using Unity, then you're screwed. There is no option for that. But you can solve this in two ways, though. First is just to make something on the inside that covers up these inside faces. It'll probably look kind of weird with the holosphere anyways, but if you do want it to look like that, Another simple solution would just be to duplicate all the faces and then you just flip the normals. This way both sides are going to be rendered. The problem with this method is that you will double the triangle count, which uh, could affect performance. But in the case of low poly models, this is usually not going to be a problem. So, don't worry about it. But now I'm gonna show you how to model this. <laughs> Enough with the modeling already, I. Eh? Let's throw some color on these bad boys instead. Before showing you the UV unwrapping though, I'm just going to explain the two methods I use for texturing. The first one is the easiest, and I recommend using this if you're a total noob. Actually, I also recommend it if you're not a noob. It, uh, just use it, alright? It's very great. It is using a color atlas texture with gradients, like this one. This here allows you to color any object with minimal effort using only one texture. The use of the gradient here also allows you to color the objects more interestingly. For example, you can make flowers with varying colors without needing to paint them at all. Or plants with lighter and dark green parts. It's all just very easy and convenient, I promise. And to create your own texture like this, it's very easy. You can do this in GIMP. Just create a new square image, add a checkerboard pattern and increase its size to the amount of colors you need. If you need more than this, consider using a larger image size. Add the colors in every other column and add them in an order that makes sense for the assets you make. Like my image here. One row is made going from yellow to lighter greens to increasingly bluer and darker greens, which I want for most of my plant assets. Make the gradient, 
just shift select the next column with the wand tool and drag a gradient from the first row to the last row. Change the colors of the ends to the colors next to it. And then do this with all the colors by selecting a new point on the gradient line next to each color. Then you just do the same with the rest of the image and zhababoom! You have a texture now that you can use for every object you want. We do have a problem now though. How do we get this to turn into this? Well first, set up the material in Blender by heading over to the shading tab, create a new material and add an image texture node, and open up your texture. To actually color your objects with this method, you barely need to worry about the UV unwrapping actually. UV unwrapping sucks. Just go over to this UV editing tab and resize the unwrap to fit one of the boxes. Done. Your box is now blue. If you want to color different parts of the same object, simply select those faces and move to another color. Nice. Uh, using the gradient part is a bit different, but it's uh, still easy. Just view the object from the direction you want the gradient to go and press U, Project from View. Then you just scale it and move it in place of the gradient. I use this for things like plants and flowers and even some objects when I want a more interesting look. For example, a fence that needs to be darker on the bottom. Okay, that's all good. But what do we do if we want something more interesting looking? Like maybe you don't want the whole house just to be a solid red. And this is where the second method I use comes in. The second method is using seamless textures, meaning each side of the texture can be matched up with another side. I mostly use this for the modular assets where I want some patterns like a brick wall or a tiled floor. Since I'm going for a stylized approach, using very flat, seamless textures is appropriate and uh, creating that style of texture takes no time at all compared to creating realistic looking textures. But uh, how do we make these then? Well, I got the thing just for you. Substance designer. Make any type of texture for only 40 bucks a month. <laughs> uh, yeah, that. I found this free software called Material Maker and you can create some really cool stuff with it. There's even a big library of materials you can use for a bunch of projects. And to make some flat materials with it, you only need to use five nodes. You need the pattern, a step node to separate the brick from the grout, a colorized node to randomize the color, and then a uniform node to color the grout, and then you just need a blend node to blend it all together. Voila! A seamless procedural texture. To UV unwrap using this texture is a bit more work, but it's still very simple. It is just very important that you get the perfect lineups with the edges if you're making your modular parts. For the walls, you select the faces in the front direction only. Watch the object in the front view and project from view with bounds. Now it will cover up the texture perfectly. For the sides and the top, you just make a simple unwrap one side at a time. Move the unwrap part in only one axis so that it aligns. Uh, just play around with this for a while. Sometimes you might want to adjust the scale in the, one of the directions just to get it looking a little bit better. Would you look at that, a brick wall in like 30 seconds. For the rest of the wall, I use the Atlas textures, so it is a combination of the two methods I showed. To have this, you just need to have two materials, and then you assign the faces that you need to the specific material, if you want to do the same thing for your models. The only thing that I have not covered here is the use of light map textures. Uh, because you see, the way we use these methods, the light mapping not, might not work out well. The only thing you need to do here is to make a separate UV channel and then you just generate the light map texture for that UV and then use that in your game engine of choice. Yeah, for the scene that I made in Unreal Engine 5, I don't need to bake any lights. So I have not done that. Sorry. But yeah, combining all of these methods, I created this exact scene right here. And I hope you can get started with doing the same for your game. So if you liked the video, consider giving me a sub and maybe liking it, you know? Very nice. If you want to see how I made a game with the same methods, just check this video out. Bye!